Chapter 21 of Plunkett of Tammany Hall, a series of very plain talks on very practical politics. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Mike Vendetti. Plunkett of Tammany Hall, a series of very plain talks on very practical politics by George Washington Plunkett. Chapter 21. Concerning Excise. Although I'm not a drinking man myself, I'm worn with the poor liquor dealers of New York City, who are taxed and oppressed for the benefit of the farmers up the state. The Rain's liquor law is infamous. It takes away nearly all the profits of the saloon-keepers, and then turns in a large part of the money to the state treasury to relieve the hayseeds from taxes. Ah, who knows how many honest, hard-working saloon-keepers have been driven to untimely graves by this law. I know personally of a half-dozen who committed suicide because they couldn't pay the enormous license fee, and I've heard of many others. Every time there is an increase of the fee, there is an increase in the suicide record of the city. Now some of these Republican hayseeds are talking about making the liquor tax fifteen hundred dollars or even two thousand dollars a year. That would mean the suicide of half of the liquor dealers in the city. Just see how these poor fellows were oppressed all around. First, liquor is taxed in the hands of the manufacturer by the United States government. Second, the wholesale dealer pays a special tax to the government. Third, the retail dealer is specially taxed by the United States government. Fourth, the retail dealer has to pay a big tax to the state government. Now, liquor dealing is criminal or it ain't. If it's criminal, the man engaged in it ought to be sent to prison. If it ain't criminal, they ought to be protected and encouraged to make all the profit they honestly can. If it's right to tax a saloon keeper one thousand dollars, it's right to put a heavy tax on dealers in other beverages, in milk, for instance, and make the dairymen pay up. But what a howl would be raised if a bill was introduced in Albany to compel the farmers to help support the state government! What would be said of a law that put a tax of, say, sixty dollars on a grocer, one hundred and fifty on a dry goods man, and five hundred more if he includes the other goods? that are kept in a country store. If the Rains law gave the money extorted from the saloon-keepers to the city, there might be some excuse for the tax. We would get some benefit from it. But it gives a big part of the tax to local option localities where the people are always shouting that liquor dealing is immoral. Ought these good people be subjected to the immoral influence of money taken from the saloon tainted money? out of respect for the tender consciences of these pious people. The Rains Law ought to exempt them from all contamination, from the plunder that comes from the saloon traffic. Say, mark that sarcastic. Some people who ain't used to fine sarcasm might think I meant it. The Rains people make a pretense that the high license fee promotes temperance. It's just the other way around. It makes more intemperance. And what is bad it makes a monopoly in dram shops soon the saloons will be in the hands of a vast trust and any stuff can be sold for whiskey or beer it's getting that way already some of the poor liquor dealers in my district have been forced to sell wood alcohol for whiskey and many deaths have followed a half dozen men died in a couple of days from this kind of whiskey which was forced down their throats by the high liquor tax if they raise the tax higher, wood alcohol will be too costly. And I guess some dealers will have to get down to kerosene oil and add to the Rockefeller millions. The way the Rains Law divides the different classes of licenses is also an outrage. The sumptuous hotel saloon, with $10,000 paintings and bricky brac and oriental splendors, gets off easier than a shanty on the rocks by the water's edge in my district where boatmen drink their grog, and the only ornaments is a three-cornered mirror nailed to the wall, and a chromo of the fight between Tom Hire and Yankee Sullivan. Besides, a premium is put on places that sell liquor not to be drunk on the premises, but to be taken home. Now I want to declare that from my experience in New York City, I would rather see rum sold in the dram shops, unlicensed, provided the rum is swallowed on the spot than to encourage, by a low tax, bucket shops, 
from which the stuff is carried into the tenements at all hours of the day and night, and make drunkenness and debauchery among the women and children. A bucket shop in the tenement district means a cheap so-called distillery, where raw spirits, poisonous color and matter, and water are sold for brandy and whiskey at ten cents a quart, and carried away in buckets and pitchers. I have always noticed that there are many undertakers wherever the bucket shop flourishes, and they have no dull seasons. I want it understood that I am not an advocate of the liquor dealers or of drinking. I think every man would be better off if he didn't take any intoxication drink at all. But as men will drink, they ought to have good stuff without impoverishing themselves by going to fancy places and without risking death by going to poor places. The state should look after their interests as well as the interests of those who drink nothing stronger than milk. Now, as to the liquor dealers themselves, they ain't criminals. That can't and hypocrites say they are. I know lots of them, and I know that, as a rule, they're good, honest citizens who conduct their business in a straight, honorable way. At a convention of the liquor dealers a few years ago, a big city official welcomed them on behalf of the city and said, Go on elevating your standard, higher and higher. Go on with your good work. Heaven will bless you. That was putting it just a little strong, but the sentiment was all right and I guess the speaker went a bit further than he intended in his enthusiasm over meeting such a fine set of men, perhaps dining with them. End of chapter 21